The situation has worsened since last we spoke. Gleipnir grows bolder in his attacks, and the conjurers are spread thin in their efforts to attend the victims. Moreover, we are no closer to finding a means to counteract the blasphemy's poison. With no choice but to wait until death claims them, some are overwhelmed by hopelessness, becoming mad beasts that lashed out at their former countrymen. Such tragedies all too easily beget further tragedy, as bereaved loved ones are in turn overcome and share in the same horrid fate. The people speak of these incidents in hushed whispers, afraid that at any moment a monster might appear within their midst. Indeed. Let us hope that the Elder Seedseer's efforts to enlist the aid of the Elementals are successful, and that united we may at last cleanse the Twelve Westwood of this evil once and for all. Urgent News, Kenekotin. Gleipnir has ambushed a party of wood whalers. They are engaged with the blasphemy near the Guardian Tree, where the Great One slumbers. This bodes ill. Has it divined the Elder Seedseer's intent? Is it attempting to prevent her from communing with the Elementals? Bah! In any event, we cannot let Gleipnir harm the tree. The Elder Seedseer bade us rendezvous with her at Sorrel Heaven. We leave at once. Battered arms and armor are strewn across the ground, but there is no other trace of man or blasphemy. I see. I think I know what happened here, though I pray that I am wrong. There is no sign of the wood whalers save their arms and are more. Seasoned warriors would never cast aside their equipment. But here it lies, and I see not a single body. In the face of certain death. Even the bravest among us can succumb to despair. Before the blasphemy's poison took them, they transformed. Gleipnir could not have gone far. He may be watching us even now. Be on your guard. The air is thick with corruption. If the wood whalers succumbed to a man, then we can expect a hard fight. 
Though I dread the thought of hurting our brave soldiers, we cannot allow the creatures they have become to roam free. Let us form two groups to more quickly track down and cull the beasts. Once we have finished, we shall regroup under the boughs of the guardian tree. You have laid to rest the last of the turned whalers. Reunite with your companions at Evershada. Our work is done, then. The loss of so many brave souls is tragic. But now they are at peace, and the guardian tree is safe. Let us take comfort in that. I but pray that the Great One will hear my plea. H.H. Elder Sibsia, are you hurt? The Great One is filled with fear. An all-consuming fear unlike any I have ever felt. It spoke unto me, and its words were clarion. Drive the evil away. Drive the evil away. It can think of naught else and so we will not receive the aid we seek. Not until we can dispel the dread that claws at the forest's very heart. No. This was our last hope.
We are not alone. There can be no mistake. This is the profane beast, the blasphemy that has mired the Twelve's wood in despair. Gleibnir. Stay back. It makes for the Guardian Tree. We must stop it. You mustn't let it touch you. Such fearsome strength. In accordance with our covenant, we Padjil have been blessed by the elementals. From the moment we are chosen, we are bound to act as mediators between man and nature. The most skilled among us are honored as seed seers, and it is their duty to guide Gridania through times both poor and prosperous. I cannot say which of you will be found more worthy. In my estimation, you both have the potential to become seed seers. Of that I become more certain by the day. But I don't want to be a seed seer. I never wanted to be a padjal either. I never asked for any of this. Why can't I live a normal life like everyone else? How come I don't get to grow old? Why was I cursed with these ugly horns? I like them. And maybe we didn't choose to be born this way, but I don't think it makes us that different from everyone else. It's a rare gift, a blessing, even. And if we can use it to help others, then we should. Don't give up on becoming a seed seer, Ghani. We'd all be worse for it. A blessing? I, I never thought of it that way. I suppose I just hated not having a choice. But maybe you're right. The matron is merciful, the elder seed seer has fallen unconscious, but is otherwise unharmed. The blasphemy must not have touched her, for I do not see the telltale mark of poison. Still, I am no healer, and she should be looked after by those who are. I shall carry her back to Gridonia. 
we must leave before Gleipnir returns. Await me at the adder's nest. Allow me to thank you again for your assistance. The Elder Seedseer has been delivered into the care of Sumian, and by the grace of the Elementals will she make a full recovery. In fact, she has already regained consciousness, but is not yet allowed to receive visitors. We can but wait for now. Gods damn it, I was useless. I could do nothing while the Elder Seedseer faced Gleipnir alone. I was to be her shield. That I stand before you while she lies abed is proof of my failure. You truly are the hero of whom the birds sing aren't you? You have suffered terrible trials, yet still you stand tall and resolute. Thank you for your counsel. How close I came to forgetting the lessons of my past. I have spoken of it to few. Truth be told, it brings me shame to recall it. I fought at Cartano, not as a soldier of the Aeosian Alliance, but as a conscript in the Galen Imperial Army. Clad in armor and machetic, another drop in a sea of pitiless metal. You grow numb to the violence and the killing out of necessity. It becomes routine, work to earn your next meal. But then the moon shattered and the dragon emerged, and when the dust had settled, I was another body clinging to life amongst the fallen. I remember staring at the burning sun above, growing weaker, wondering if the heat or an Aeosian's blade would finish the job. But it wasn't death that came, but salvation. I was delivered from my well-earned fate by the Elder Seedseer. She deigned to save a man who once bared steel against her people. Her kindness didn't end there. Once my wounds had healed, she welcomed me with open arms. Never did she regard me with distrust, nor did she ever make me feel obliged to repay my debt. She fought not to take life, but to safeguard it. Through our friendship I came to see the wisdom in that distinction, and pledged my remaining years to her service. Told have accomplished nothing to throw myself against Gleipnir in vain, and even if there was profit to be found in the sacrifice, she would not abide it. Your words served to remind me of this. We will defeat the blasphemy, I, but we will do so without forsaking that which we hold. Dear. This I swear.